Christ is risen. Hallelujah. In masterful sentence construction, Jesus in our gospel for today takes all of those individual words and he places them in such a way so that we see only him. He takes that personal pronoun, I, and he puts it in the emphatic position right at the beginning of the sentence. He says, I am the good shepherd. And from the very outset of this verse, we are invited to look only at Jesus and away from ourselves and our infirmities and our problems and our vexations. He beckons us to look only to him. He calls for our attention and he makes us see him as he really is. Literally, both in the Greek and in his life, in his actions, it says, I am the shepherd, the good one. This English word good is a bit of a bland and thin translation of the original word. Jesus is not good like we would have one of Evelyn Bickle's pecan pie slices, which is actually excellent, but for case of example, Jesus is not like just a, a, like a piece of pecan pie is good. It's not like a student who's been working really hard and they finally are able to achieve a 98 on their final exam. And they, we say that they did good work. This is not the word that we would say it's a good day because the sun is out. That would be the word agathos, the bland, regular, everyday, life is good kind of word. No, this is the kalos word. This is the word that says he is distinguished and he is excellent and he is eminent. He is choice, he is surpassing. He is precious, he is admirable, he is the noblest. And notice that Jesus is the only one good enough to merit the praise of the Father who demands perfection, the praise that said of him, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. He is Colossus. So this morning we're going to just spend a little bit less time than normal, I think, under this theme, studying this text, that the risen Jesus makes us shepherd serious. And to borrow a line from Vince Lombardi, if I may, this shepherd of ours, this good shepherd of ours, and his shepherding work it's not just everything. It's the only thing. And here's why. There was once a pure and holy flock that was without blemish or defect. And that flock wandered. Wandered far away from its shepherd. It had been created to serve that shepherd, to glorify that shepherd, to praise that shepherd. But the flock had its own mind, a herd mentality, I guess you could say, and it wandered away from its shepherd. And the wolf came, and the wolf decimated the flock. Not by killing it, by taking its rabid, infectious attitude toward all and anything good and it transformed itself into the members of this flock and it turned into mad sheep disease. Now the, sh sh the flock at that point should have been hunted down by the shepherd and exterminated as mutant mutton. But this shepherd cared for this flock. In fact, he actually loved this flock in spite of their wandering. So, 
The flock was quarantined into this endless cycle of living in muddying grass and muddying fields and having babies, baby sheep, little lambs, lambs that were also born with this infectious mad sheep disease. Never again would this flock ever graze or roam in the luxurious grass that the shepherd used to bring it to. Never again would it eat that sweet grass and taste its nectar and sweetness that the shepherd had raised this grass just for him. Never again would this flock drink the cool waters that the shepherd used to lead them to. Never again would they be able to hunker down in the mid-afternoon for a little snooze in the cozy sun. No, this flock was not able to return to the shepherd because it was infected. But did I happen to mention that this flock, this shepherd, really cared for this flock? In fact, he loved this flock. And he wanted his flock back. So this shepherd, one day when the time was right, came down from his peaceful mountaintop home and he announced, I am the shepherd, the colossal one, the good one. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that's just what happened. The shepherd became infected, laying down with his sheep, and he died. But that's not the end of the story. We human beings are not simple creatures. But when it comes to spiritual matters, the truth of the matter is that we're blithering idiots. We have absolutely no way, what well, we think we do, we have absolutely no way of getting ourselves back to our shepherd. We are not infected with mad sheep disease. We are infected with something far worse, and it's called sin. We spread it from one generation to the next as we have our children, and we live in a world plague of it. And it was all too evident to Jesus that his beloved flock was infected when he came down, and we were in trouble. And there was only one solution to this problem, And hunting down his sheep and exterminating them was not one of them. He for whom the whole creation exists, he whom the Bible calls the Lion of the tribe of Judah, he for the sheep who added absolutely nothing to his own infinite worth, he laid down his life as the Lamb. The lion of the tribe of Judah set aside his crown and his scepter and he became a sacrificial lamb. He embraced the cross of Good Friday because he was not as concerned about preserving his own life as he was concerned about preserving the life of his sheep. That's you. You know, you would have to be a stone to sit here and listen to this story and not be, not be moved by its message. You would have to be a total and utter thick rock to not be moved by this love that you hear being poured out for God's sheep, for you. Can you hear his voice in this gospel? Can you hear how this shepherd calls himself the Colossus shepherd, the noblest of shepherds that lays down his life for you? Do you hear flowing from those words the forgiveness of your sins? Do you hear how this God-man, this good shepherd, was more concerned about laying down his life and then that, taking that divine life that he had given that gives now you life 
And then he takes his life back up again and returns to life so that he indeed, at one point, can give you life back into your mortal body. You know, we often talk about people who are dedicated to this cause or to that cause. But here's the thought that I pray will absolutely floor you. The lion became the lamb. God's son became the sacrifice. And the shepherd died for the sheep. That's you. Meaning that you were and you are and you always will be Jesus' greatest cause, his dear sheep. Which means that the risen Jesus makes us deadly shepherd serious. First for our own spiritual lives but also for the lives of others. Today is all about the shepherd, and today is all about the shepherd's heart. And so if my faith is real, and this Easter resurrection actually has any sort of integrity to it whatsoever, then how can I not become shepherd serious? How can I not become shepherd serious about those key few words that are in verse 16 of our text, the other sheep that are not of this sheep pen? For the last six months, we have been celebrating the Jesus half of the church year, the festival half of the church year, and we have been hearing how our salvation was won for us. But now we're starting to get closer to that transitioning point, even in this season of Easter, even with this text. We're getting to that transitioning moment where we're starting to see now and be encouraged now how we're going to live that salvation in our daily lives. The reason my father loves me is that I laid down my life only to take it up again. Where do you find motivation for such a cause? Where do you find motivation to get your eyes off of yourself and focused on to others. That little verse that we heard says he came for all, he died for all, and he rose for all. And the Apostle Paul basically penned the same idea but personalized it when he said in his letter to the Corinthians, and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Which means that he came for you. And he died for you. And he rose for you. And so how are you going to become motivated for such a cause? Your life is full. Your life is harried. In fact, to use the famous phrase that I love to use all the time, I'm so busy I don't have time to change my mind. Hogwash. How urgent is it to you to worry about the sheep that are not of this sheep pen? Who has God placed into your life that you are a shepherd of? What responsibility has he placed on your lap? Can you picture them? I'm really not letting go of this silent moment until you do. Yesterday we were down in Syracuse and we heard story after story after story at the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society about missionaries and women and families, and peoples, and tribes that the gospel is touching. And that is all wonderful work. And the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod and those individual pastors and those individual congregations are shepherding those folks with the, the means of grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is absolutely wonderful work. And thank you for your support of that through your offerings. 
but I'm talking about you this morning. To whom has God placed in your life that you are a shepherd of? Maybe it's you. Maybe you're at the point in your life where you have forgotten about your Sunday school lessons and your catechism lessons and your confirmation day when you stood before that altar and you swore with, with all sincerity that you would rather die than fall away from the truth of the gospel. Maybe you need to avail yourself of the frequency. What is your frequency of t contact with the means of grace? Reevaluate for yourself how concerned are you about the spiritual welfare of your children and your grandchildren? And quite honestly, what are you going to do about it? Finally, your concern for your life, for the life of your Jesusless relative, your Jesusless co worker, your Jesusless spouse, your Jesusless neighbor. Is it going to move you to action? And like we heard a couple of weeks ago, to actually say something? Brothers and sisters in Christ, where's the motivation for this cause? It's in the truth, it's in the reality that Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. Easter shows us that this is not just important news, that this is imperative news. Easter shows us, and this text in particular shows us, that our good shepherd is not just everything. He is the only thing. Because today, the resurrection of Jesus makes us deadly shepherd serious. And I pray it has for you. My prayer for you today is that God sends you out of this house of worship, out into the mission field with a true shepherd's heart. First of all, for yourself, to avail yourselves of the means of grace at all and any time. And then to share that word of life over and over and over again with those who are dying without it. May God bless this effort of your work, dear under shepherd. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, it will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.